to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Recorder, roll we'll call, please. Commissioner Dahl? Here. Vice Mayor Roman? Here. Mayor Bunker? Commissioner Plump? Here. Commissioner Gallagher? Here. Do we have anybody signed up for public hearing? Okay. Public hearing and ordinance to amend the formula associated with tree bank contributions and the land development regulations for the city of Lakeland, Tennessee. Seeing no vote, next item. Public hearing and ordinance to regulate commercial door to door solicitation. Seeing no vote, next item. Treasurer's report, general fund, state street aid fund, debt service fund, sewer fund, sewer water fund, solid waste fund. Do we have any questions? Do we have a motion to accept these reports? So moved. And second? Second. All favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. Reports from committees, members of the Board of Commissioners, and other officers, city managers report. So, thank you. Um, did a few things go over with you tonight. Um, first of all, let's clarify a, a few things. Uh, leaf, leaf pickup. Um, as you remember, last year we did a loose leaf pickup, and there's been a lot of talk from people kind of asking, you know, what, where is it, why aren't we doing it again? And so let me give some background on that and on where we are and how we got here. Prior to last year, remember, Republic picked up an un unlimited number of bags, yard waste bags, small bundles, uh, along on their same trash day. That was in the contract. Uh, that's just the way it was. There was no loose leaf pickup uh, citywide. Last year, under the, the new contract, the new contract last year, it removed that unlimited bag service. So everyone was limited to two bags per cart they had out, which of course, when the leaves started falling, that created a major problem throughout the city. Obviously, feel that more two bags worth of leaves on their properties. So it's always thought that we were going to fix that with the public fix the contract, get back to the bags. In the meantime, as sort of a band aid for the last season alone, we started doing a loose leaf pickup. And if you remember correctly, because we only have one back truck uh, and a small public works crew, we could only make one tour of the city for the entire season. So we, we mapped it out from about this time last year, going through, I believe, March. Uh, and they were, we had a crew dedicated to picking up leaves every day, uh, going throughout the city, every street was covered but only one time. Neighboring cities who have the loose leaf service, they usually have it weekly. Uh, the leaf truck follows the trash truck. So the same uh, day with literally you can have your leaves out of the curb and they come out and pick it up. We of course don't have the equipment to do that, that's why we don't have it. Um, so that was again a temporary fix. This year we're back, we fixed the public contract. We now have unlimited bags again from them so uh, and that happens every Friday. So every Friday you put out as many bags as you wish or as many bundles as you wish. Yes, we actually increased our service under this current contract going back to the unlimited bag service. So that's where, where that stands. We put some posts out on social media and the website, notify residents, Channel 19 also, to remind them of this new service. Uh, so we pick it up <coughs> here and not leave their fall and people are bagging leaving. Um, another one, kind of a hot topic in town, is the tree cutting that's going around citywide. Uh, this is done by MLD and W. It's within their easements. They come by through the city every four to six years or so and clear their lines, clear their easements. Now they do have a new policy this time around. Uh, this time around they're cutting down everything within 10 feet of the wire. In the past they've done a lot of that, but, but in certain areas they sort of carved out around the wires. They've expressed that they've had problems with that countywide, not just in the city of Lakeland, but through all their territory. You know, trees grow up and get back in lines too quickly, so they adopted a new policy that's consistent with national energy policy that calls for the complete taking down of trees within that easement. Unfortunately, the city doesn't have any say so what goes on technically within that easement. Within 10 feet of the wire, they have the right to do what they're doing. We have been monitoring them uh, to make sure they stay within 10 feet so they're not veering outside. Uh, we're also talking about cleanup. Uh, I don't believe the cleanup has been good at all, so they'll be coming back and clean up a lot of it. They're getting the big stuff out, but there's a lot of uh, you know loose debris on the ground that's still there. And that's got to be picked up. What, what, yes, is, what is the ex expectation? Because there's limbs hanging in the wires, there's trash yeah. all over the place. I yeah. mean, is it all going to be 
cleared or, or like a lot of it's just been chopped off, like four foot. I mean, is yeah, that, that's my expectation that they would take care of those. So if you see them, let me know because it's something that we're going to go back with the MLG employee, MLG employees who oversee the tree cutters and make sure it's cleaned up properly. I believe that's where we do have some clout in this whole thing. We can't control the trees being cut, but I believe we can't control what they do and what they leave us with. But should they take the stumps out? And st I mean, like some of them are just cutting off and leaving the tree stumps there or, you know, stick. Should yeah. that and, I don't, and I don't know the specific um, place where that is. I know my lot, uh, they took out 125 trees on my lot. Um, I have a lot of frontage. Yeah. And I also have an old fence, 40 year old metal fence going along there where the trees were sort of tied into. So they don't get down into the fence area. They cut everything off the top of the fence. And I have 125 four foot stumps lining my property. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I'm in jail or something. <laughs> so that is a problem, but it's part of their policy. They don't want to get down there because, of course, if they knock the fence over, then they're replacing fences all over town. They don't, they don't do that. So I think Chris brought up a good term. Uh, you know, we have may have some influence over them, but not control over them when we're doing this. But I believe it's, it's right for them to clean up the mess they're making. And we'll keep up with them so that. Yeah. But they've covered a lot of ground. I know seed tape was done this week, or late right. last week, and some this week also has a, had a big impact. Look, there's lips that are in the wires. They may not be now, since it's blowing, but, um, there was a lot of limbs left in the wire. Call me the audio guy. Just, just for the record, I asked him to turn it up because I'm pretty soft spoken. So, uh, maybe I asked him to turn it up. Is there a motion to approve the Sounds better. Any other questions for Jim? I have a few more things to go over. So those are the two uh, hot topics. Um, uh, litter pickup. Uh, a couple things. We have two two different types of litter pickup happening right now. We have volunteer pickup, <coughs> which is being, being led by the Keep Lakeland Beautiful Committee. This past week, we did two cleanups. We did one Wednesday morning, another one on Saturday morning. This is focused on Huff and Huff Road uh, along the interstate front and rear. This is the most littered part of our city by far. Uh, we took out over, in, in the two days, took about almost 400 pounds of litter off the street right away and didn't even get it all. There's still sections there where we're nearly near impossible to get down to. They're down drain trails. We found uh, there's a whole collection of liquor bottles in one area we just can't get to. So we're having our other crew go down there and take care of those. But almost 400 pounds of litter on one stretch of the road. It's, it's, it's maddening and saddening at the same time. Um, separately from the volunteer cleanup, and, and by the way, we do those every month. We have the second Wednesday of the month and second Saturday of the month devoted to volunteer litter pickup, again, led by the Keep Lake and Beautiful Committee. The more people, the better out there. We had seven on Wednesday, and I think there were, there were two or three on Saturday, which is a small crew that much litter. Imagine if we had 25 or 30 out there, it, it would be unbelievable what we could do. Uh, but that was the focus, and every month we pick a different location to pick up litter for the volunteer activities. The sole focus has been Huff and Huff so far. So that's the volunteer. Separately, as you know, we have a new litter crew that is part-time city staff members that are up picking up trash. They're avoiding Huff and Puff to let the volunteers go. They'll be coming back behind them now and cleaning up some of the tougher spots volunteers can get to. Uh, but they made a lot of progress. I'll have stats available in the coming week, uh, kind of showing how they're doing it and where they're doing it. They've covered a lot of ground so far. Uh, very impressed with their work ethic and what they've been able to accomplish. So. I think right now making a huge dent in the problem that's been plaguing us for so long. Once we have that knocked down and maintained, it will be much easier. Um, and part of that will be educating our, our residents and passers through who are littering our roads. It's unacceptable. We'd like them to do that. A um, couple of meetings this week on Thursday night. We have a regular planning commission meeting at 5 30 on Thursday. We also have a special uh, LDC meeting that night. Uh, we have it scheduled for 6 30. Correct me if I'm wrong, 6 30. Um, that's due to holidays. LDC meets the fourth Thursday, and they get in trouble in November and December. So they will have a meeting after the planning commission meeting this coming Thursday, Thursday night. Um, Plantation Hills Park, as you recall, there's a gentleman who spoke to this body about two months ago talking about Plantation Hills Park. 
since that time, the Parks Board has, has discussed it and talked about it. And just to refresh everybody's memory on this, this is the park in Plantation Hill subdivision on the back side off Hadley Drive. Uh, it's, it's a small park with very limited access. There's two access sort of, one sort of a gravel, gravel driveway between two houses to get back there that's gated off. Uh, and then there's another kind of pathway between two houses to get to it. Terrible access. It's got a playground in there that really needs some, some more whole parking for it. So the thought is, do we, do we put a lot of energy and money into this park to improve it up to something that would meet our standards or something else? And something else could be a sort of a, a list of issues. One, you know, trying to get rid of the property, either either giving it to the Plantation Hills folks, the taste of property or something, um, or some other use for it. I know Michelle will chime in if you're, you were part of the discussion at the Parks Board meeting. There's um, different situations that we're going to consider in our next meeting. Okay. What to do with that, that land. Okay. And then will eventually come back to the BOC and the recommendation uh, for you to decide what you want to do that park. But I think it's it can't leave it as it is. We have to do something with it uh, either way. So that'd be coming up. Um, uh, past board and commission meetings. Um, typically, this is where the liaison would give a brief report on uh, past meetings. It just happened. Um, if you have anything, Michelle, if you have a comment, if you have a parks board meeting, other than plantation, go to park discussion. <coughs> I know one thing talked about was the registration the adult basketball league is now open for registration. Uh, they'll be going through mid-December for, for signs on it. The youth basketball, the registration is over. Uh, I believe the teams are being set and coaches are being notified on that. So uh, that's uh, both programs are phenomenal. We saw the flight football program is really similar to that. And they were phenomenal. I do have a question on that. You gave me that information for the football staff? That, where is that going next? It's going back to this body in December. Okay. Yeah, we'll have a discussion on the December board session. To talk about options and how we're coming up. Um, MPC, now we're coming up on the next MPC meeting this week. Uh, as one, I know Tom's prepared to talk a little bit about uh, the last MPC meeting. Let's Clark, if you want to, if you have any comments about the last planning commission meeting. Oh, no, no. Okay. Tom, do you have anything to add? Uh, just that uh, we did look at the Exxon uh, renovation uh, plan, and that was approved. Uh, they are remodeling the exterior of their facility, and uh, we did uh, take final action on the Oak Creek Road preliminary plat. There were six conditions. Uh, one of those conditions has been met, the other five have not been addressed yet. So uh, we're still waiting for that. Uh, and then coming up on Thursday, Rezoning uh, property owned by Evolve Bank, uh, which is just south of Oakwood Grove, um, and that rezoning request is similar to Oakwood Grove in that they're requesting R1, R2, OS3, and OS5, uh, which is open space 3 and 5. Um, and that will be looked at at the planning commission meeting. And then uh, LDC had me share a few comments on LDC. Um, I wasn't there, but I actually called in, um, so I was on conference. We looked at logos, a lot of discussion on logos that will be coming to us. Um, I know that they're working on some signs. We had signs that went out for bid, and nobody bid. Um, so actually, uh, one of the gentlemen on the LDC that does marketing is working with some builders and some other people and trying to get some designs together and trying to get some people to donate and do things that cost. So. And then we'll meet this week to discuss some of the next steps. <clears throat> it's amazing how they whittled down about 300 logos to a small number. So, very impressive. Um, go back to what Tom was talking about, the planning commission, about the Oakwood Grove and then the one, the development south of that. We're talking about um, two substantial residential developments that are in the planning process right now, they're in the approval process going forward. We have the one in the north that was approved, uh, one in the, just south of that that's uh, been submitted and being reviewed now by the planning commission. There's also a third one south of there by, owned by the Bank of Arla. They've been talking to us about uh, an upcoming submittal. So that's a lot of residential development along Chambers Chapel Road on uh, the backside of Oakland Grove. So it's pretty impressive. We've been 
waiting to, for something to spur the residential development. Uh, in addition to that, off Memphis Arlington Road, Kensington Manor, which was a development approved back in, I believe, 08 or 09, that's sort of been sitting there in a base level of approval as you know, came back, it's been extended. They are, they are now moving forward, having a pre-construction meeting next week. Uh, you will see a contract very soon to this body, a development contract. Uh, they have feet and they'll start construction. So they're probably the first one that will, will break ground coming up in the in 20 weeks. It's uh, right around the corner. So that's me very impressive. Uh, also, one more update. Uh, IA Park, um, for those that attended the event last weekend, I think, I hope you left impressed. And the park looks great, the stage looks great. Um, now we're going to turn our focus back to the building again. As you know, we've taken control of the room. We've done some minor improvements in there just to get it open for our cleaning carpets, uh, some other repairs uh, going on in the room. We've cleaned out a lot of the clutter. It's going to be open for senior use in the coming weeks. Uh, as you know, the windows have been the main area of concern. Uh, they have been foggy, the seals have been broken on them. We've known about that for some time. And then one has recently shattered, it's still in place, but it's been shattered on the outside. We've been getting quotes to replace all the windows across that room. Um, the first quote, the first set of quotes, option one is to replace the glass as is. We had a couple of comments from commissioner recently to uh, look at, at pricing out the possibility of windows that would open. So if you were in the room, if there's a vent in the park, you actually open windows, get some fresh air in, hear the music on the stage, whatnot. So we're actually bringing back two options and we'll bring those back to you when we get those. As far as there will be a price difference, of course. It's not as much as I thought it was going to be, but it's still a price difference. So we'll have that discussion coming up. Uh, that's all I have for, for this report. Sewerage Commission business, concept sanitary super plan for Lakeland Middle School. We have the uh, request letter of the staff. Speak to us. Just simply uh, <clears throat> a little bit of background. Uh, whenever we entertain any development, we have to look at what impact that's going to have on our sewer plant. But uh, <clears throat> with that in mind, we have a number of developments that have been approved that count towards that capacity. Uh, when they looked at the elementary school in terms of the level that was going to put on the Scott Street interceptor, uh, all of these pre-approved developments factor into that equation. A2H has concluded that there's capacity there, and they recommend that uh, you know, we approve this. Uh, future developments will go through a similar process. We look at what's on the books, what our capacity is, what impact the development's going to have, and do we allow this development to go forward. Any questions, Tom? We have the proposed resolution in front of us. Do I have a motion to accept it? So moved, do I have a second? Any discussion on it? Seeing no discussion, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, like sign. Seeing none, resolution is passed. We have the consent agenda in front of us. If you've, if you've had a chance to take a look at it, we have a motion to accept meeting minutes from previous meetings. So moved. Have a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Consent agenda is passed. Your regular agenda and next item. Applicant interviews, DOA slash SWDOA, uh, PRB slash NRB, and LDC. So it looks like we have two people in front of us tonight. The first one is Mr. Patrick Kitchens, applying for the Board of Appeals, Stormwater Appeals. It looks like this is for a free appointment. Good evening. Uh, my name is Patrick Kitchens. This, uh, Vice Mayor mentioned, and uh, I've been serving on the uh, Board of uh, Sewer Summer Appeals since its inception uh, for the three years that it was in existence on its own. And uh, during that time, we really never did have any meetings, so there wasn't much to do. Uh, then when it merged with the Board of Appeals, uh, I served last year, um, and we did have a few meetings, so I enjoyed that. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background of what I do professionally, um, the Director of Environmental Health and Safety for a chemical company here in Memphis. I've been doing that for about uh, 12 years. During that time, I lived here in Lakeland. Um, when I moved here from Chicago, I picked Lakeland because I really enjoy living outside of the uh, metropolitan area and still having that close access to, uh, to what 
uh, the Metropolitan Area has to really offer. Uh, and I've enjoyed living here at Lakeland uh, tremendously. And uh, I believe in serving the community at whatever capacity I can. I serve professionally in uh, the local emergency planning commission. Uh, I've been on the board of executive uh, uh, membership there uh, for a number of years. I can't even remember how many years I've served at that capacity. And uh, I'm more than willing to continue to serve on the Board of Appeals if uh, that's the wishes of the uh, Board of Commission. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we also have Mr. Matt Bright for Lakeland Development Corporation. Good evening. I don't know if I had a comment. Uh, three minutes. Uh, three minutes. Three minutes. Okay. Uh, just for the record, I've seen so many people do this. I'll try it myself. Matt Bright, 375, that's in Hill Cove South. Uh, first, let me say, I've uh, said it uh, very privately, but let me also have it on record. Congratulations to Commissioner Dow and Commissioner Roman. Uh, well deserved, and uh, I think you guys will be great. Good to see you later. Um, I was encouraged to apply for LDC. Um, LDC is something that uh, is obviously near and dear to all of our hearts, business development. Um, obviously, we need to expand our, our tax base here in Lakeland, is something that we've talked about quite a bit. Um, for those that don't know, I was on the school board. Uh, I know I'm not going to say anything to the commissioners that they don't already know more than likely, but uh, I'll say it for the record. Uh, just a little bit of background on myself. Um, uh, I own a small business here in Lakeland, Market Vex, and I've done that since 2009. Before that, I had 10 years of corporate experience at the Service Master Corporation here in Memphis as a senior business consultant, uh, handling marketing for Market Vex. We Specialized in digital marketing, so online marketing, building brands, things of that nature. Um, I will tell you that one of the things that um, kind of appeals to me, uh, personally speaking, about the LDC, uh, going through the last few years, uh, very uh, closely and very much in depth with uh, the school developments uh, and everything that surrounds the school development. Um, I grew in my love for the city. Uh, I've lived here for 13 years. And uh, I don't think anybody would disagree um, with the fact that I'm very passionate with uh, my thoughts about Lakeland, what I think Lakeland can be. Uh, I do believe we can be the best place to live in Shelby County. And I think uh, economic development is now the next step in, in making this happen. Um, I do have a lot of good relationships, obviously. I have good, good relationships with the board and a lot of people that serve on many of the committees. Uh, of course, the school board, city attorney, city manager, but uh, also in my years with the school board, I was allowed to serve as our PLM rep, which allowed me to build some good relationships with state legislators. Uh, Representative Wong Aller, uh, I've sat in Senator Mark Morris's office, uh, many other legislators, and uh, kind of um, uh, sold the benefits of Lakeland at that time, the school system, but uh, those relationships uh, remain intact, and uh, I like to leverage those relationships see how we can benefit those and try to get uh, some economic development here in Lakeland. Um, last but not least, I just wanted to say that, uh, again, I enjoyed my time as an elected official. Uh, my retirement, if you can call it that, uh, was very much short-lived. I really didn't plan on anything necessarily. Uh, but when I was asked about it, uh, again, the more I thought about it, I really did see the value in saying, hey, how can I serve? So if there's a way for me to serve Lakeland uh, on the board, or any other capacity, um, I'm happy to do that. I think that's on the track record over the last few years that uh, I want to do what it takes to help my city grow. And uh, if this is a way that I can help my city, I'd be more happy and pleased and honored to do so. Any questions? Yeah. Um, you mentioned that you would be open to other boards. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not what you said, but that's what I got. Right, 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 right. Is that, that's correct? That is correct. I mean, this is the only position that I actually filled out the paperwork for at LEC. Um, I've been um, responsible, if you can say that, with kind of getting the football program going. I mean, Robbie's taking that over now. Uh, Commissioner, County Commissioner David Reeves and I kind of uh, hatched that uh, plan, if we can say that. So now there's going to be a football league, uh, a tackle football league, and cheerleading league starting next fall for third through eighth grade, hopefully. And that will, of course, roll into our new middle school and uh, we'll have a great uh, football program. So pleased with that, uh, but uh, Robbie has done a great job, sort of, no pun intended, running with the ball uh, since we kind of got that going. So uh, yeah, great shot. Um, so, um, so this is the only thing that I officially, just to your question, Commissioner Gow, uh, this is the only thing that I officially applied for, but again, um, uh, if 
if there's any way that I can serve up. So, you didn't apply, I think on the forms or on the old forms, it said first choice, second choice. Yeah, the uh, only thing that I listed was LDC on the form. Okay. But, it, but it does indicate, list all that you would be interested in, but on the official form, I only listed LDC. Okay. Anything else? Right, thank you. Commissioners, I have a. We have one more. Uh, I don't know if you're said, uh, Ryan McDaniel is here well, for the Board of Appeals. He's an existing member of the Board of Appeals. Three minutes, please say your address. Yes, sir. Ryan McDaniel, 9393 Colt Snake Road, here in Lakeland. Uh, good evening. Thank you all for letting me come up here. I didn't get to make it to the last meeting. Uh, I had a family issue, but I uh, just wanted to express my interest in serving Lakeland. I'm currently serving on the Board of Appeals. I uh, have been doing that for about two years now and uh, serving as chair right now. So I enjoy it. I want to serve however I can to the and this is one way I can do it. And so uh, I'm definitely excited about the potential and the opportunity to maybe serve again moving forward in, in that capacity. So uh, I just appreciate you letting me come up here and, and express that. So if you, uh, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. But uh, oh, uh, my background, I'm an engineer with A2H here in Memphis. Very likely. Um, structural engineer by trade, but that's part of civil engineering also. So my background is is in uh, construction and design uh, also. So uh, kind of fits with what we're doing. But, uh, I appreciate it. My only question, as chairman, do you recommend Patrick Kitchens for your board? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a joy to work with, and I appreciate his service also. So it's a good thing about this board is we've got a lot of... Uh, I mean, everybody's giving up their time, but everybody is uh, very objective, uh, going by the letter of what we have in front of us to, to uh, rule by and, and make determinations. And so uh, the, the main objective of everybody is to follow that, follow the guidelines, and keep Lakeland moving in the right direction in our capacity. So, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. We have passed the public hearing on the commercial door door solicitation, however, I was given the car. Do we have any objections to letting this person be in town? Ms. Lou Melton, you will state your name and address. You have three minutes, ma'am. Either going to have a registry 
where we're going to make these companies come up here to City Hall and apply for a permit or we're not? Why, why are we leaving a loophole open? I just want somebody to explain to me what our laws are going to be, what we're going to change them to, and why. I'm on a blue. I'm unaware of this uh, crime spree that you're referring to. Uh -huh. You're saying that uh, crime is up. What are you referring to? I mean, what uh, report are you refer referring to? Uh, just like even last week, did you not hear it when the not last week, the last meeting when the sheriff's deputy was here and they talked about all the cars that had been broken into and uh, for having a problem even in Davies, you know, also they their uh, windshield smashed. You know, that kind of thing. We had 27 reported crime, crime, crimes last month. That's not what we call crime spree. I mean, I think it's pretty good. I think the sheriff. Well, I'm not going to argue the point over a crime spree or not. What I'm arguing over is why are we going to let people in here going door to door and knocking on doors and knocking on doors? Well, I was just referring to what you said about the crime. The crime, the crime is not up in late today, actually. The one I was told is now. Okay, well, I'll get my statistics on that. I'm sorry? We'll definitely have discussion on the actual item. We'll discuss everything that you that you discussed. Can Chris answer some of this? Would you like to? Sure. Um, I can answer it. I can answer it. I guess just discuss it with you. Uh, this I can't remember exactly what triggered the discussion uh, originally, or excuse me, which commissioner triggered the discussion. But there certainly was uh, extensive discussion about how to uh, respond. I, I sort of take issue that it's not uh, it's not being done at the request of a, uh, any particular company. Frank, frankly, I, I recharacterize it as a company that a vendor that hopes to, to uh, solicit business in Lakeland pointed out uh, that our ordinance. Uh, is not compliant. It's unenforceable. Uh, you have to challenge, and we would very, very likely lose. The ordinance would be struck. Commercial speech is protected speech. People don't like to hear that. They don't like being uh, uh, approached on a certain number of doorstep. Commercial speech is protected speech in a similar way that political speech is, not to the degree, uh, but in a similar way. And so communities, cities, counties have authority to regulate it within reason, and there are certain tests that are applied to determine whether or not the regulation is within reason. You can regulate time, place, and manner of how things are done if there's a, 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 an interest uh, of the local government. Uh, it has to be narrowly tailored so that uh, you, you, don't, you, you don't kill it, a fly with a hammer. Um, but an outright ban on commercial speech or, or solicitation, frankly, it, it is well set a law that it's unconstitutional, it's unenforceable. Presently, that's what our ordinance states, it's an outright ban. Uh, and, and so, you know, I try cases for a living, and I'm happy to defend this, and as long as you guys would like, uh, but I would submit to you that it would be an effort uh, uh, in utility. And so, in an effort to, to sort of uh, find a compromise and build in some safeguards, there was a discussion that originated on the board of create, creating uh, this do not knock list. Um, I've talked to the lawyers uh, in, in Collierville. I, they, we didn't say out loud they got the idea from us, but frankly, I think they got the idea from us. Uh, because we had this discussion, it sort of came up in a laughing sort of way. That it was, it was uh, to be modeled after the do not call list, that people are familiar with the federal do not call list. Um, we did some extensive research about this. I, again, I, I worked with my friends that represent Cardinal. Uh, and we, we sort of got to the same point, we, we're taking different paths. Uh, there's reasons for that. There's reasons that our, our proposed ordinance is drafted the way that it is, uh, and Carlos is drafted the way that it is. Presently, the way this is drafted, uh, as Ms. Melton points out, it says that the city may do this, and it goes on to, to, to uh, explain how, if the city chooses to implement this do not knock list, how it will be implemented. Uh, it doesn't, requ doesn't create a requirement. It, from it, my position as a city attorney, I like that. It gives us the city authority to do something. It doesn't create a mandate that the city uh, take on any additional uh, administrative tasks. Certainly, if it's the will of, of the board, you will, in fact, do that. It does not allow people uh, to just knock door to door. It requires them to get a permit. Putting the do not knock list aside, it requires solicitors to come sit down and get a permit. If 
you do an active do not knock list, they are at that time given that list and say, here's a list of, of uh, residents that don't want to do not knock. And so uh, it's my understanding that, that that's, the, that's the desire of, of the board, uh, that, that you know, that's what the city manager plans to implement if this ordinance is passed, uh, and, and to implement this list, maintain this list that residents can, can uh, elect to avail themselves of. Uh, that's basically how it works. I'll be happy to answer any more questions. Um, well, first of all, um, I think, and, and to be honest with you, I haven't looked at some of the verbiage in it, but um, there is something that states that it will be, your addresses will be online. Is that yes. correct? Yes. And why do they have to go to the city? They have to come to the city to get the permit. To get the permit to do it. Yes. But what prevents it? So, in other words, if they are out soliciting, and they do not have a permit, then somebody can call the police. Well, that's how it is right now. So yes, yes, but you, you just said that it, it was not you know, legal the way it is right now. But if they don't do it, if they don't get the permit, then it is legal to call the police and have them removed from soliciting. Yeah, they're not, they're not the okay, and then the, the, the other question I have is, I know that you said from a legal standpoint it would be good to have the verbiage to where you could say yes, we, we will do this, no, we will not do this. Um, if this body passes it, then what would have to happen for somebody to come back and say no, we don't want to do that? Would they have to pass another ordinance? Or? Uh, can, can we discuss that under the actual item? Sure. We'll just look, we'll save all other questions. We're now under public hearing. Thank you for your time. Okay, no one say one thing <coughs> if, with regard to hers. If we don't have the registry, how is the company going to know not to knock on our door? Do you understand what I'm saying? If we don't enforce that part right there. The other thing I want to say is Bartlett still has the ordinance of don't come, don't knock. If you do, we're calling the cops. So sorry to you guys because y'all are fixing me a lot of time to call now. Thank you so much. Public hearing was open back up for this. Does anybody else would like to discuss on this? Seeing that, recording examples. Ordinance on three and ordinance to amend the formula associated with the Bartlett Street Identity Complex Development Agency Ordinance to amend the formula associated with the Bartlett Street Identity Complex Development Agency Ordinance to amend the formula associated with the Bartlett Street Identity Complex Development Agency Ordinance to amend the formula associated with the Bartlett Street Identity Complex Development Agency Ordinance to amend the formula associated with the Bartlett Street Identity Complex Development Agency Ordinance to amend the formula associated with the Bartlett Street Identity Complex Development Agency Ordinance to amend the formula associated with the Bartlett Street all in favor of adopting this ordinance, say aye. Uh, you want to hear me? We are in Okay. All right. There was no question or discussion. Uh, all opposed? Ordinance is passed. Ordinance final reading and ordinance to regulate commercial door to door solicitation. Do we have a motion to bring this to ordinance before? So moved. A second? Second. Well, ordinance is properly brought to the floor. Any uh, discussion? Yes, I want to continue my question. Um, if, what is, what would have to happen for the body for this to be reversed? For what component of it to be reversed? To lose the ability to maintain the You list? said it, it may. Right. That means you may Im implement it or you may not. Right. You okay, we may. Right. So we decide we want to do this. Somebody else is up here 10 years from now. What happens? How do they reverse it? That could be their administrator. And we can accept an uh, amendment to this ordinance as well. Sure. Any yeah. yeah, ordinance can be in yeah, final reading. Sure. It doesn't change the, the heart and nature of the ordinance. So Jim, just hypothetically, could could decide that he just doesn't want to do this anymore? The board doesn't have to do anything about it? Oh, sorry. Well, I don't really like that. Would you like to amend it? Yes. We have a motion to amend it, changing the verbiage from may to will. Well. I also would like it to be a board decision. If it's reversed or if something changes, well, I think. Well, it's an ordinance, so at that point, right? to change the language of the ordinance. Do I have a second on that motion? Yes, I second the motion. Okay. I have a second. The amendment to the ordinance is probably on the floor. Any other discussion now? All in favor of changing the verbiage from may to will, say aye. Right. And we're talking about it 9 201A, changing from the city of Lakeland to may to the city of Lakeland. Yes. Question. All in favor of changing this amendment? 
All in favor of accept the amendment. Would you like to hear the ordinance as amended? I'd like to hear from the city attorney on that. Well, the, 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 effect, the effect of that is that it creates the mandate that the city mm -hmm. may take the list. That's all it does. Okay. It doesn't, you, the, you lose the ability to, to not do it. So if people don't call and there's not interest in this, okay. then it's still. The list can have a set of names. I do have one other question. How will people be notified? Because all of the people in this room know about it. But there's a lot of people that aren't engaged that you know, <clears throat> work every day and they don't know anything that's going on. How do we ensure that those people know that they need to sign up for this if they do not want solicitation? I think they have well, a good implementation. Yeah, we typically use the same outlet we normally use through the website, social media, uh, et cetera, the local news outlets. They come to the meetings. This one may be big enough to actually send a letter to the city wide. So we may do that. Just make sure everybody knows that. Are you in favor of that? Yes, I would too. So we may have to our, our finance director points out that's about fifteen hundred dollars, but um, in some cases it's worth it. We're a bit, we're, we're doing a budget in the possibly in December. Okay, we have mm -hmm. question properly on the floor. Did you have a question? Section 9-201A, the City of Lakeland will, shall create and maintain a do not knock list allowing any owner or occupier of any residence within Lakeland to prohibit his commercial solicitation at his or her residence by registering his or her address with the city. All in favor of accepting the amendment to the ordinance, say aye. Aye. Opposed? We now still have the actual ordinance on the floor. Any other discussion on the ordinance itself? Seeing none. Call for the question. All in favor of passing the ordinance, say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Seeing none, this ordinance is passed as amended. Next item. Resolution approving concept sanitary sewer plan for Lakeland Middle School. We have discussion on this. Would anybody like to hear uh, from Mr. Skinner? Okay, once again, uh, the Lakeland School System has requested uh, that the Board of Sewers report that it's adopted by the Board of Sewers, report it to the BOC, and to be approved, indicating that we do have the capacity to deal with this uh, sewer and that we have the supporting documentation. And again, this is with all the elements that are on record. Asking that not only middle school, but the letter addresses potentially if there's a high school built on that campus, that it, the uh, Scotts Creek um, interceptor can handle that also. Any other questions? Seeing no, skip. Seeing no other questions, do I have a motion to bring this resolution to the floor? So moved. Do you have a second? Okay. It's properly on the floor. Do we have any other questions? Seeing no other questions, I'll call it. All in favor of passing this resolution, say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. The resolution is passed. Resolution removing a member of the Parks and Recreation Board slash Natural Resources Board. Do we have a motion to bring this on the floor? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. We're discussing this, Jim. Is the fourth resolution proper to the floor? We're discussing, Jim, is this? I've never seen this done before. Uh, what actually has been recently done uh, is it's basically uh, lack of attendance. Okay. So the Parks Board made a recommendation to vacate a seat for lack of attendance, which would now open it up to a new appointment during these uh, December appointments. Has the person been notified? Uh, as far as I know, yes. I know the last time we did it, the person knew about it and they were fine with it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's good. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Any other questions? I know we shouldn't babysit, yeah. but I think it's protocol should be to err on the safe side and to make sure that there's not something wrong or if there's not an issue and that the person is aware. So. They're aware of this meeting time? Yes, and as far as I know, Robbie reached out to her after the last meeting to notify her. He's at a conference this week, so I can't turn around and flag him down. Okay. 
He said he was going to make contact. Resolution is properly on the floor. See no discussion. I'll call for the question. All in favor of passing this resolution, say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Resolution is passed. Next item. Resolution annexing the new middle school property pursuant to the Lakeland Board of Education's request under the authority provided in TCA 6 51 104. Do I have a motion to bring us to the floor for discussion? So moved. Second. Second. This is essentially a housekeeping matter. You can know the drive it is uh, going to access the middle school as an uh, entrance on uh, the grounds of the house. There's a portion of the tip of that drive on each end as a reserve area. My president would have to just be out here. The uh, schools are, as the owners of the property, they're requesting that those, that small sliver on each end of the drive be uh, I've got the uh, property descriptions here. I can show you, again, this is simply a housekeeping matter. We get the edge of the drive and it's in there. No discussion? Seeing no. Question, all in favor of pass the resolution, say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. The resolution is passed. Discussion on structure and funding of Chamber of Commerce. Seeing that this was sponsored by Mayor Bunker, is it okay? Do I see any objection to tabling it until he's available? I have Mr. Perkins. All right, seeing nobody signed up for public discussion, do we have any?